Let's make SpongeBob's house. Who lives in a pineapple under the sea? Okay, so I started with a sphere and just shaped it roughly using soft selections to create smooth deforming. Then I remeshed it just so I know I have a decent topology, which should be pretty straightforward on such a simple and symmetrical shape. Then for the leaves on top, I created a spline, then added a long and thin rectangle with a bunch of subdivisions along the y-axis and used the spline wrap deformer to deform it along the spline. Used the size curve in the deformer to shape the edges into a more of a leaf shape. Current state the object to bake the shape, pulled some vertices around to give it a slight concave shape. and put it in a radial cloner along the top of the sphere and duplicated it for the second layer of leaves and then manually placed two leaves at the very top. Then I used a random effector at very low numbers to just add some variation to the leaves and finally made the cloners editable to manually move around some of the leaves. Originally, I did this in a slightly different way, but this is honestly the easiest way to do it. Okay, next, added a ring object for the window. Then for the door, I added a plane with one subdivision, put it in a subdivision surface to round it out, and made it editable so I can shape it around into a door shape. extruded it, inset the inner part, extruded it inwards, then selected the outer ring without the bottom part to extrude it out, then selected the front faces of the extruded part and extruded them forward. And we have a door. Then I added a cylinder and flattened it to create the base of the door handle and added another cylinder with a really large fillet to get this round top. deleted the bottom part and scaled some of the edge loops with soft selections to create this shape. And put it in radial cloner to place a few of them around the handle. Then duplicated the handle cylinder to create this extruded part of the handle. Nice. For the glass part of the window, I removed all the edge loops around the cylinder, selected the inner poly ring, UP to split it, and inverted normals, and filled it with grid. Then just duplicated the whole thing to create the second window. And lastly, for the little chimney thing, I just shaped it out out of the cylinder. Then to make sure all the objects will keep crisp edges inside a subdivision surface object, I selected the edges that I wanted to keep crisp and hit MR for the weight subdivision surface tool and dragged it till the edges got crisp. And did that for the door and the windows as well. Then I UV unwrapped everything, even though I didn't record it, that process always seems so boring to me. And honestly, with these simple shapes, it's so straightforward. Then I exported everything as an FBX and moved to Substance Painter. I baked all the information along with the vertex color map for ID mats. If you want to see this process in more detail, check out one of the videos I made about it. Okay, so I added a base color layer. 
Then for that pineapple texture, I added a layer with only positive height information, applied a mask with a brick generator texture, changed projection to cylinder, and scaled, rotated, and changed the offset till I got something like this. Then I added an anchor point so I can reference this grid texture on other masks and added a blur, bevel, and levels on top. and played around till I got something like this. Then I also added a warp filter to slightly distort it. And actually I also added a slightly lighter albedo color to this layer. Then added another layer masked with the anchor point I made and inverted it so I can apply a darker color between the extruded segments with another subtle distortion. Then I added another layer with negative height information and hand painted all those marks on each segment. If the grid was smaller with hundreds of segments, I would have done this procedurally, but since there are so few segments, I just manually did it in a minute or two. Then I noticed there was this artifact on the UV seam that came from the original displacement layer, so I just added a paint layer to the mask and manually painted it white, which fixed it. Then I added an anchor point to the mask of the hand painted marks and added that anchor point to the darker color layer mask so it will paint them a darker color as well. Then I added another layer with some yellow color and masked it with a bunch of noises. I then added a displacement channel for this object and changed all the layers with height information to displacement. This way I can add fine bump detail in the height channel that is separate from the larger displacement information. The only problem is that the displacement information isn't showing in substance. Not sure why, if you know why, let me know. But that's okay because we already saw that all the displacement stuff we did is working fine. So now I can add a layer with height information masked out by these really small noises to get that textured fine bump channel. Okay, so for the windows and door, I just added a blue color channel and added another light blue layer on top, masked out by a large noise. Grouped the two layers and added a mask with color selection and selected the ID mats I made for those parts. Then duplicated the group and changed the color to a much lighter blue for the window glass parts. And duplicated again and changed to green for the leaves parts. Then added another bright color layer masked with a curvature generator on top of everything to give all the edges a slightly brighter tint. Then I copied the bump layer from the pineapple and pasted it on top of the other objects and added another displacement layer with very large noise just to give it some extra wonkiness. And lastly, I added a roughness layer on top of everything and masked it out with a bunch of noises and grunge maps and also made it stronger in the crevices of the pineapple.
Then I just kind of went over everything, made the darker accents on the pineapple even more dark, made the yellow noise a bit stronger. And added another slightly yellow noise layer on top of the green leaves. Okay, so here it is in cinema. I have one large area light from the top at around 35 watts. And I have this indoor HDRI. We can maybe rotate it to come from this side. Then for the materials, I have the roughness map connected to the roughness channel and also to the specular channel with an inverted gradient. So we're getting the opposite effect. Then the OpenGL normal map that's containing all the fine bump detail into the normal channel. The displacement map into the displacement channel. I said mid-level to 0.75 since it looked better. And I have Gaussian blur applied, but we actually don't need it. So let's turn it off. Yeah, this is much, much better. Then I have albedo set to black and diffuse transmission turned on. Albedo map plugged into the random walk albedo channel through a color correction node, saturation turned up. With a kind of darker yellow dirt node plugged into the brightness channel to make all the crevices slightly darker. And I have this fall off map colorized like so plugged into the radius channel. We can flip the color is not a huge difference. Also, IOR is set pretty high at 1.7, just for some extra glossiness. And same thing for the other material. I did turn down the power of the normal maps a bit and also set the color space to non-color data. Displacement channel looks like it was turned off, so I turned it on. Maybe up the radius length a bit on the SSS. And also I have a round corners channel just to make sure everything is rounded out. And again, IOR set pretty high. These are my octane settings if you want to see. I actually added the AGX OCIO config file so I can use the AGX transform. Felt more right for the scene. If you want to know how to do it, check out my AGX video. Then I realized I forgot to change the look to appearance punchy, so I had to go back and change some of the textures to reduce all the saturation. Then I used a flower spline with some displacement and cloned it a few times around the house. applied an octane tag on them and turned on render as hair and added a few different color materials on them.
Then I realized I forgot to add those rivets on the rims of the door and windows. So I added another displacement and color layer in Substance and hand painted them and hand painted them in. And lastly, I wanted to add some bubbles flowing out of the chimney, so I drew the spline, cloned a bunch of spheres, and used the spline as the clone object. Randomized their position, but added a linear field so the randomization only starts once they come out of the chimney. and then animated the offset setting on the cloner to move them along the spline. I added offset variation, but that prevented it from looping, so I removed the variation. Also changed the random mode on the random effector to Gaussian to prevent some of the spheres from glitching around. Then added another random effector only to randomize the scale of the spheres and applied a specular material on them, turned on fake shadows and thin wall, even though I forgot to do it here. Added very slight dispersion to give it some subtle chromatic aberration. And also I added another light with some animated water caustics to give it that subtle underwater look. And this is the final results. This was slightly different from my usual videos. Very, very straightforward and simple, not crazy sculpting, but I just randomly had this idea and wanted to make it kind of mix in between my usual sculpting videos and my tutorials. I wanted to give much more information about how I made this, but also go super fast. So yeah, hope you enjoyed, hope you learned something. You can buy this model along with the Substance Painter project file on the new plastic gum road, or buy prints and pins I made on the pink eye gum road or get access to these project files on my Patreon or membership because you know there's just no way for me to make these videos without the help of my cute and absorbent and yellow patrons and members you see on the screen right now. Thank y'all so much. I love you. Have a great day. Peace.